Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, a friendship in three acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. Episode 81, I call A Dream as a Gift to the Future. This podcast is dedicated to an Instagram follower of mine who prefers to remain anonymous. She gave me a gift that was larger than the actual objects that arrived in the mail. Here is the story. A Dream as a Gift to the Future This phrase has been haunting my head for the past few weeks, so I thought I'd examine it to see what it's trying to tell me. Initially, I thought it was about an entry I read from one of my journals from a number of years ago. So, I'll start with that story. These are rough times. I, like most people these days, have had dark days. The pandemic wears on all of us, wherever we are, like a low-grade grinding noise that we can't escape for very long. On a particularly dark day in the summer, I was fretting about the future. Would my business continue? Were my students all right? Were they healthy? When might I see them in person again? Would the students who came to my classes remember me? Would I be able to regain the momentum that I've had in the past? I fretted. So, as I do sometimes, I went into my journals to look at entries from the past. My journals are a way for me to talk to myself, to sort out what's happening, to figure out what's really on my mind. If I need to see what's really going on in my head... I will sit with the journal, pen in hand, and keep writing until the craziness downloads from my head onto the paper. Then I can look at it. When I look into these journals, I look for analogies in the past. It helps me to remind myself that I've been in tight spots before, and I was always able to figure my way out. So, on that dark day this summer... I landed on an entry from the early 2000s. It was a dream I'd had the night before, which I felt compelled to record. I don't remember many of my dreams, so I pay attention and document them whenever I remember them. This dream occurred when I was still living in San Francisco. The setting for the dream was a coffee house near my place called Mommy Toby's. It was on Hazen Laguna. It was one of my hangouts. There were several people hanging around having coffee, and a hippie-like man who looked like the singer Cat Stevens came in. He was carrying a guitar. He sat down and started strumming, which resulted in some of those looks from the other patrons. These looks said, oh boy, one of those. The guitarist was undeterred. He began singing. As he sang, one by one, the other people in the coffee shop were won over. I awoke singing that song. As I awoke, I heard a voice say, The singer is you. People won't understand you at first, but eventually they will hear you. Somehow that day, I needed that message. A dream as a gift to the future. I'd forgotten that particular entry until I reread it. But indeed, it was a gift from a past version of me 
to the present version of me. So when I was thinking about the idea of the dream as a gift to the future, I thought that was that. Until this week. For those who don't follow me on social media, I make doll clothes. Yes, I do. Barbie-sized. I learned how to sew at age four by making the Barbie clothes. And, on and off throughout my adult life, I've made them for fun and for profit. In early 2019, New York Magazine commissioned me to replicate some looks from the couture collections for Barbie. They were doing an article on Barbie as influencer. This started a story in my head. The story of my assistant, that's her name. It expanded to include a cast of characters, and their exploits have all been duly posted on social media. As the pandemic bore down on the world, and the lockdown kept me indoors and away from people, this cast of characters grew as did their wardrobes. I was slightly embarrassed that I was playing with dolls at age 62, thinking that it may make me look crazy. However, I was feeling crazy, so I didn't much care. I also realized, though, that as a child, I used Barbie as an escape from reality. For those new to the podcast, my Barbie was 27, lived in a big city, drove a convertible, went to the opera, the theater, and restaurants, and she only owned evening clothes. Making her wardrobe and imagining her make-believe world insulated me from the harsh realities of my crazy childhood and early teen years. I could go into my bedroom and lose myself, making clothes, dressing the dolls, and poring over the little catalogs that Mattel sent showing all of the wondrous outfits that were available. These outfits were not for me, though. Our family didn't spend much money on them, regarding them as too expensive. That's one reason I made my own. More importantly, though, my parents didn't want to buy the sissy boy in a small town, Salina, Kansas, any of these girlish things. So, I longed for them in silence. Making my own was the best I could do. But I was inspired by these stylish clothes. And, as it turned out, I made a career of making the kinds of clothes I dreamt of. Barbie influenced my aesthetic. A side benefit was that I got good at the craft of sewing, so my latest creations have a polish I couldn't have achieved when I was a kid. Being good at the craft of sewing has also provided a parallel career of teaching what I know. It is said that you teach what you want to learn. And I still want to learn. Which brings me to this week. I got a message from a follower on social media. She was downsizing and had the Barbies and clothes that she and her sisters had played with as children. She sent me a few photos. Lovely things. They enjoyed many happy hours playing with the dolls and the clothes, so she wanted them to go to a good home. She asked if I might like to have them, and I told her I would be over the moon. The box arrived two days ago. Now, I was not prepared for what was inside. First, the box was large-ish and heavy, which surprised me. I excitedly opened the box, and I was floored. Every single outfit that I had longed for all those years ago was there. Mostly complete. The shoes, the accessories, obscure things I'd only seen in the catalogs or the photographs. Everything. A dream as a gift to the future. The dream I had to possess all of these beautiful things. That dream led me first to San Francisco, then to New York. That dream drove a career and a passion. 
That dream eventually led to getting on social media and posting my eccentricity about creating this little doll story to cope with a pandemic. A dream as a gift to the future. And the gift, now that the future is the present, is receiving the gift of all of the beautiful clothes I pined for as a kid. But now, as an adult, I get to savor them and appreciate them for even more than just being beautiful doll clothes. A dream as a gift to the future. A postscript. This box, to me, is like getting an exquisite box of chocolates. You know, the kind that are so rarefied that you take one out and savor it. This is how I intend to treat this gift. Like an exquisite box of candy that I can savor at my leisure. Me and the little sissy boy from small town Kansas. Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King, on Facebook, at Kenneth D. King Design or on my main website, kennethdking.com.